Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here, and today I shall be doing a review on the complete first season of American Dad on DVD. This features the first 13 episodes of the series, and is a show that I am actually very partial to. I've not watched American Dad in a very long time, and I recently ended up revisiting some of my favourite earlier episodes of the show. The after-school special with Steve and Debbie is one of my personal favourites. The one where Barry's true self is revealed, that's a really creepy episode. I like it here. The E.T. parody where Roger is literally beaten up by a child. It just made me really want to revisit the show entirely, and I ended up binge-watching through season one. And I really did enjoy watching through these episodes again. I've not seen them in a very long time. And the last time I did an American Dad review was uh, many years ago. And when I actually reviewed this box set, it was probably about eight or nine years ago, funnily enough. And that review was god-awful, just kind of just name-dropping my favourite episodes and not really going into any kind of detail, really. And so in this review, replacing that older video, we shall be looking into the show really as a whole, its humble beginnings, and the episodes that are included on here. The series was created by Seth MacFarlane, Mike Barker, and Matt Weitzman, and was very heavily influenced by Barker in the early seasons, as MacFarlane essentially took a back seat with this show, and it originally aired in 2005 and was actually meant to be a replacement for Family Guy, um, which was cancelled in the early 2000s for those that were not aware of that. And the show was kind of remarked as McFarlane's failure, despite Fox once again screwing around with the airtimes of episodes and making a show redundant and unsuccessful in that right. I wonder where that's happened before. But the show did receive mixed reviews at first, and was very heavily compared to Family Guy, which I do disagree with. It has some similarities, of course, but enough differences to remove itself away from the association with Family Guy and its characters. And once again, in a similar vein to Family Guy, ironically, um, the DVD releases are very similar to that of Family Guy, where the episodes are mixed from different broadcast seasons. So season one of American Dad was actually only seven episodes, and so the remaining six that are included on here to bring it up to 13 uh, are included off of season two. And then with the season one kind of naming, they bizarrely dropped that with the release of volume two. And consistently from here on out, the American Dad DVD releases have all just been volume rather than season. Before we delve into the episodes, here's a quick look at the actual DVD set in itself. So there's the spine there, American Dad, season one. Back cover, as you can see there, we've got a brief summary of the show. If you wish to pause and read that over, you are, of course, welcome to do so. Very brief listing there of the special features. There are a lot more included with some great deleted scenes, some animatics there as listed. We have a great behind-the-scenes featurette in general, um, which really does give a great summary of the show and the ideas behind creating something that is so politically and patriotically inspired. Uh, the runtime on this one is 271 minutes approximately and is rated a 12 here in the UK for moderate violence, language, sex references, and hard drug references as well. Free disc set, which contains there the free DVD cases in the inner box. And here's the artwork across all free DVD sets, which is fairly similar to one another. So there's disc one, two, and three. And so, going through the episodes, first up we have the American Dad pilot episode, which is really a strange opening in my opinion. It's equal in its character introduction, where we have Stan as a right-wing CIA agent, Francine, I guess is your typical sort of Marge Simpson getting up to her own adventures as well. Uh, we have the liberal daughter figure, Haley, who is a college student who is purposefully against her father's beliefs. Steve Smith is your average geeky teenager with hilarious sensitivity issues. And then we have Roger the Alien, a very unique character and arguably the most iconic character from the show. And of course, Klaus, the German man whose brain is stuck in that of a goldfish, voiced incredibly by D. Bradley Baker. And the episode is centred really on Steve asking out a girl in his school, going as far as rigging a school election. And I love the introduction of the family dynamic throughout this episode, um, particularly the dog scene where Steve asks if he can have a pet dog so girls will essentially notice him. And this is one of the funniest scenes throughout this first season, with the result of the dog looking a little bit dead. What the hell is that? It's a dog! 
Next up is Fret Levels, where Francine gets a job as a real estate agent and begins making more money than Stan, which essentially makes her the breadwinner of the home. And this very maturely emasculates Stan, and speaking of which, I feel Stan in some of these earlier episodes isn't really an overly coherent character. He's foolish, but he's far away from that of, say, a Peter Griffin-style character, which is certainly a good thing. Um, but the way Stan is portrayed, he is very hit or miss in some of these early episodes. But aside from that, I do appreciate what happens with his character throughout the remainder of this show in particular. Where we see Haley going out of her way to help the homeless, where Steve sees an opportunity to manipulate these homeless people and profit in the form of a bum fight. And Stan simply just steals this idea from Steve, which I do love. And uh, this is for sure a better episode for its structure than the first episode, but Stan's motives are a little bit questionable here and there. Next up is Stan Knows Best, where Stan and Haley are at odds with one another yet again, with Stan disagreeing with her life choices, and so this forces Haley to move in with her stoner boyfriend, Jeff Fisher, a really great character. And so, trying to get Haley back, but being the stubborn man that he is, he doesn't want to apologise for his actions. So, he bizarrely cuts her off from any finances to try and force her back into the Smith family home. Instead, this backfires where Haley becomes a stripper. And with the remainder of the episode, its primary focus, other than Haley, is on Jeff, surprisingly. And he is one of the more interesting characters from the series, especially in some of the later seasons. And I do love how, over the course of the show, he does become basically dumber and dumber over the course of the series as a whole. And in this episode in particular, I love how we have the beginning of Roger's disguise routine, enabling him to leave the house without being caught as being an alien. Hey, Foxy. Oh! <laughs> And last up on disc one, we have Francine's flashback, where we explore Stan and Francine's marriage, where Stan forgets their anniversary, and so to avoid an argument, he attempts to erase a portion of her memory, but instead this backfires and he erases 20 years worth of her memories. And so the remainder of the episode is spent trying to basically recreate the past in order to make Francine fall back in love with Stan since she just does not remember him. Um, but I was honestly more interested in the hilarious side story of Steve trying to get close to the girls in his school. And again, that does indeed backfire. Next up is Roger Codger, which heavily explores Roger and his struggles of being an alien trapped on Earth. And the scenes at the beginning of the episode with Deputy Director Bullock played amazingly by Patrick Stewart are for sure some of the best on this boxer, and I love when Roger is basically thought to be dead and disposed of. This essentially influences his disguise trope, uh, which is even more sort of method to his madness, I guess, and allows him to actually get home to the Smith family by pretending to be somebody else. And this is for sure one of my favourite character-based episodes, with this solidifying a major part of what Roger seen throughout the rest of the series. Next up is Homeland Insecurity, which is another favourite episode of mine, shifting the focus onto Stan and Francine, where Stan accuses the new neighbours, the Mamaris, of being terrorists, and he makes a fool of himself during a street party, and it's hilarious to see how dedicated he is to proving something which essentially just isn't true, literally going as far as imprisoning the Mamari family themselves in their own back garden. Deacon Stan, Jesus Man, is definitely a much weirder episode of the series and probably one of my least favourites, where Stan competes for the position of Deacon at the church, and in doing so he wins people over at a party by serving potato salad that Roger has replaced with his alien breast milk as he goes through his reproductive cycle, and as a result of this Steve ends up getting pregnant. Yeah, definitely not one of my favourite episodes, but I did find, funnily enough, the one-off line from Francine in one of the earlier scenes of the episode really funny about her hatred for the actor George Clooney, which was possibly setting up the episode much later on in the series where she actually tries to kill George Clooney. All About Steve is a fairly amusing realisation episode for Stan, where it becomes all the more apparent that Steve is more of a geek than an athlete, which goes against what Stan desires for Steve to become. And this realisation is all the more powerful where Stan ends up turning into sort of the stereotyped kind of geek with braces and a bad sort of acne kind of skin rash from his job 
where he's trying to catch a cyber terrorist, but this allows him to empathize with Steve. And it's honestly really satisfying towards the end of the episode, seeing them both working together, where it's revealed that the language from Steve's elf card game is the same language used by the terrorist, and so they work together to try and crack the code. And last upon disc two is Bollocks to Stan, where Haley breaks up temporarily with Jeff, and bizarrely enters into a relationship with Deputy Director Bullock of all characters. And I love the side story in this episode in particular, where Steve finds a mobile firm which happens to be Vice President Dick Cheney's, and with Roger, they together start prank calling all the contacts in the phone. <laughs> A Smith in the Hand is another really strange episode, and a very uncomfortable one at that. And probably one of my least favourites as well, where we document Stan basically discovering masturbation in his 40s, and he becomes addicted to that self kind of gratification as it states there, which, yeah, definitely not an episode I'm a fan of in all honesty. Next up is Connor, which introduces us to Stan's father, Jack, a man who was portrayed as the ultimate kind of action hero special agent when in reality he is in fact a jewel thief. And this really was a great setup for Jack's character and the bizarre relationship he shares with his son Stan. And it really is very interesting to see over the course of the show as a whole really how this character in particular evolves, a very strange evolution of one character. And last upon disc three we have the Stan of Arabia episodes. Uh, both part one and two, with Stan of Arabia obviously being a play on words to that of the film Lawrence of Arabia, a fantastic movie. And so with part one, we have a so-called promotion from the CIA, sending Stan and the Smith family to relocate to Saudi Arabia. And throughout the episode, we see Stan's selfish side building up only for this to essentially empower him in this foreign country where the man has final say on basically everything as far as their laws are concerned, leading him to reject his American citizenship as he denounces the whole family's American citizenship as he embraces the new life in Saudi Arabia. And then with the second part, this is kind of a typical reset style episode. We see the conclusive ends to Stan's second wife, who was hilariously referred to as Thundercat. Uh, we have Francine's outspoken actions against Saudi Arabia and the sort of female empowerment she is trying to promote in this foreign country where it's basically illegal for women to do basically anything. Um, we have Haley's very sudden relationship coming to a close, Steve almost getting killed for trying to bring peace to the Middle East. Only for this all to be turned around, where Roger's role as an Arab wife to a very powerful prince allows the Smith family to be freed and returned back to the United States safely. And as we wrap up this review, here is a look at the disc artwork for each set there. So there's disc 1, disc 2, and of course disc 3. And that's going to do it for my review of American Dad Season 1. Overall, a really fun first season in my opinion. It explores the characters well enough, and surprisingly, American Dad's quality, especially for these earlier episodes, really does hold up in my opinion, and I do kind of prefer this show to Family Guy. Like I said before, they are different, other than really sort of the typical kind of family setting, but... The show in itself is different enough and certainly brings a lot more unique kind of characteristics to the table. And it's a show that if you haven't seen it before, I'd definitely recommend checking out. So thanks for watching my review on Season 1 of American Dad. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments what was your favourite episode from this DVD set. And for more videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me?